A grandfather clock, also a long case clock, tall case clock, grandfather's clock, or floor clock, is a tall, freestanding, weight-driven pendulum clock with the pendulum held inside the tower or waist of the case. Clocks of this style are commonly 1.8 to 2.4 meters, 6 to 8 feet tall. The case often features elaborately carved ornamentation on the hood or bonnet, which surrounds and frames the dial or clock face. The English clockmaker William Clement is credited with the development of this form in 1670. Until the early 20th century, pendulum clocks were the world's most accurate timekeeping technology, and longcase clocks, due to their superior accuracy, served as time standards for households and businesses. Today they are kept mainly for their decorative and antique value. Origin. The advent of the longcase clock is due to the invention of the anchor escapement mechanism by Robert Hooke around 1658. Prior to that, pendulum clock movements used an older verge escapement mechanism, which required very wide pendulum swings of about 80 to 100 degrees. Long pendulums with such wide swings could not be fitted within a case, so most freestanding clocks had short pendulums. The anchor mechanism reduced the pendulum's swing to around 4 degrees to 6 degrees, allowing clockmakers to use longer pendulums, which had slower beats. These consumed less power allowing clocks to run longer between windings, caused less friction and wear in the movement, and were more accurate. Almost all longcase clocks use a seconds pendulum also called a royal pendulum meaning that each swing or half period takes one second. These are about a meter 39 inches long to the center of the bob, requiring a long narrow case. The long narrow case actually predated the anchor clock by a few decades, appearing in clocks in 1660 to allow a long drop for the powering weights. However, once the seconds pendulum began to be used, this long weight case proved perfect to house it as well. British clockmaker William Clement, who disputed credit for the anchor escapement with Robert Hooke, produced the first longcase clocks around 1680. Within the year Thomas Tompion, the most prominent British clockmaker, was making them too. Modern longcase clocks use a more accurate variation of the anchor escapement called the deadbeat escapement. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Description. Traditionally, longcase clocks were made with two types of movement, 8-day and 1-day, 30-hour movements. A clock with an eight-day movement required winding only once a week, while generally less expensive 30-hour clocks had to be wound every day. Eight-day clocks are often driven by two weights, one driving the pendulum and the other the striking mechanism, which usually consisted of a bell or chimes. Such movements usually have two keyholes, one on each side of the dial to wind each one. By contrast, 30-hour clocks often had a single weight to drive both the timekeeping and striking mechanisms. Some 30-hour clocks were made with false keyholes, for customers who wished that guests to their home would think that the household was able to afford the more expensive 8-day clock. All modern striking longcase clocks have 8-day movements. Most longcase clocks are cable-driven, meaning that the weights are suspended by cables. If the cable were attached directly to the weight, the load would cause rotation and untwist the cable strands, so the cable wraps around a pulley mounted to the top of each weight. The mechanical advantage of this arrangement also doubles the running time allowed by a given weight drop. Cable clocks are wound by inserting a special crank called a key into holes in the clock's face and turning it. Others, however, are chain-driven, meaning that the weights are suspended by chains that wrap around gears in the clock's mechanism, with the other end of the chain hanging down next to the weight. To wind a chain-driven longcase clock, one pulls on the end of each chain, lifting the weights until the weights come up to just under the clock's face. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate striking sequences In the early 20th century, quarter-hour chime sequences were added to longcase clocks. At the top of each hour, the full chime sequence sounds, immediately followed by the hour strike. At 15 minutes after each hour, one quarter of the chime sequence plays, at the bottom of each hour, one half of the chime sequence plays, and at 15 minutes before each hour, three quarters of the chime sequence plays. The chime tune used in almost all longcase clocks is Westminster Quarters. 
Many also offer the option of Whittington chimes or St. Michael's chimes, selectable by a switch mounted on the right side of the dial, which also allows one to silence the chimes if desired. As a result of adding chime sequences, all modern mechanical longcase clocks have three weights instead of just two. The left weight provides power for the hour strike, the middle weight provides power for the clock's pendulum and general timekeeping functions, while the right weight provides power for the quarter-hour chime sequences. <laughs> Origin of the term, grandfather clock The Oxford English Dictionary states that the popular 1876 song My Grandfather's Clock is responsible for the common name, Grandfather Clock, being applied to the longcase clock. The song was composed by an American songwriter by the name of Henry Clay Work who discovered a long grandfather clock in the George Hotel in Piercebridge, in County Durham in England. When he asked about the clock, he was informed that it had two owners. After the first owner died the clock became inaccurate and when the second owner died, the clock stopped working altogether. The story inspired Henry to create the song. Grandfather clocks are of a certain height. There are also grandmother and granddaughter clocks, which are slightly shorter in height. There are no grandson clocks at this time. Topic. Types. Topic. Comtois clocks Comtois clocks, also known as Morbière clocks or Morez clocks, are a style of longcase clock made in the French region Francia Comte, hence their name. Features distinguishing this style are a curving, pot-bellied case and a greater use of curved lines. Often a heavy, elongated, highly ornamented pendulum bob extends up the case see photo. Production of these clocks began in 1680 and continued for a period of about 230 years. During the peak production years 1850-1890 over 60,000 clocks were made each year. These clocks were very popular across the generations, they kept the time on farms throughout France. Many Comtois clocks can be found in France but they are also frequently found in Spain, Germany, and other parts of Europe, less in the United States. Many Comtois clocks were also exported to other countries in Europe and even further, to the Ottoman Empire and as far as Thailand. The metal mechanism was usually protected by a wooden sheath. <laughs> Bornholm clocks and Mora clocks Bornholm clocks are Danish longcase clocks and were made on Bornholm from 1745 to 1900. In Sweden a special variety of longcase clocks was made in Mora, called Mora clocks. Bornholm clock making began in the 1740s when an English ship, which had longcase clocks in its hold, was stranded. They were sent for repair to a turner named Poul Adizan Arbo in Ron and as a result of his repair of them he learned enough about clocks to begin to make his own. Topic historical manufacturers Clockmakers in Britain John Alker or Alker of Wigan, Lancashire Alam and Clements William Barrow, London Thomas Burkle Nantwich, Cheshire Joseph Bowles, Winborn i.e., Wimborn, Dorset. Active 1791 Samuel Bowles, Wimborn, Dorset Robert Bryson, Edinburgh William Bucknall, Burslem Stoke-on-Trent Thomas Bullock, Bath, Somerset Samuel Buxton, Dis, Norfolk John Calver, Woodbridge, Suffolk Thomas Cartwright John Clement and Son, Tring, Hertfordshire Thomas Dobby, Gorbals, Glasgow Richard Donisthorpe Florida, 1797, of Loughborough Matthew and Thomas Dutton Peter Fernley, Wigan John Fernhill, Wrexham Thomas Hackney, London, C. 1700 to 1750 Edward Harrison, Warrington John Harrison, Wakefield, Barrow in Furness, London Nathaniel Hedge, Colchester, Essex Holmes James Howden, Edinburgh Thomas Husband, Hull Thomas Johnson William Lassell, 1758 to 1790, Toxteth Park, Liverpool Timothy Mason Gainsborough, Lincolnshire Alexander Miller, Montrose Petty Stirling, Scotland Daniel Quer Thomas Ross, Hull John Smelling, Alton John Trubshaw, London James Woolley Codner Thomas Warswick, 
Lancaster Thomas Wright Henry Young, Swaffham, Norfolk John Wilde, Nottingham Clockmakers in Ireland W. Egan and Sons, Cork Ezekiel Bullock, Lurgan Clockmakers in Finland Masters of Connie Conan Mesterit, 1757-1865, Ilmajoki Finnish Museum of Horology as Master of Yako Kani Manufactured Table Clocks and Pocket Watches Ilmajoki Museum as Masters of Kani Manufactured Horse Vehicles, Clocks, Looms, Locks, Tools, Machine of Gear Kirvarki Clockmakers in the United States Aaron Brokaw (1768–1853), Bridgetown, New Jersey Isaac Brokaw (1746–1826), Bridgetown, New Jersey Silas Merriman (1733–1805), New Haven, Connecticut Aaron Miller (-1778), Elizabeth Township, New Jersey Lumen Watson (1790–1834), Cincinnati Simon Willard (1753–1848), Roxbury, Massachusetts Zachariah Grandfather Clocks (1975–1987), Chicago, Illinois Clock Case Manufacturer in Australia Harry Williams, Oxford Cabinet Company Tie Limited (1946–1961), Granville, NSW, Australia. Topic: <laughs> Current Manufacturers. Hermley Clocks, Amherst, VA. Howard Miller Clock Company, Zealand Me Ridgeway Clocks owned now by Howard Miller Clock Co.